My name is JC McCauley. I'm Naisha McCauley, and, and you're, you're watching, watching accesstv.org. of you who may have been here at our two o'clock session uh, or those who may be new we're going to repeat what we did at two o'clock we have uh, some presentation slides we'll, the team will go through my name is Rich Armstrong I'm a principal engineer at the Connecticut DOT I'm going to turn it over after my brief uh, introduction to Mike Morehouse from Fitzgerald Halliday and he'll do some other introductions um, we have our consultant team here and the city's consultant uh, team is here as well. Uh, so this is uh, about the Asylum Hill area where we're investigating and planning for a new multimodal station as part of the ID4 Hartford project. We're going to look at streets, street locations, opportunities for economic development, and of course the siting of a new multimodal station. So thanks for being here. Uh, I know Mike is going to lead us and wants this to be very interactive, so feel free to raise your hands with any comments or questions along the way. Thanks. Thank you, Rich. Feel free to come up closer if you want. Feel so far away back there. Um, well, good evening. Thank you for coming out. Uh, I think what I want to do before I um, get into the agenda and what we're going to cover tonight is have our team introduce themselves. We have um, the experts, both uh, from the DOT side, the, the consultants working on the ID4 project, but also the consultants working with the city of Hartford on some of the urban design and station planning issues. Uh, so um, I'm gonna ask each person just to briefly identify their name and their role on the project. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Jim Rice, I'm an architect with uh, Trans Systems. Gina Tremarco, I'm Trans Systems, and I'm heading up the multimodal station planning effort. Casey Harden, also Trans Systems. I'm a transportation engineer. Uh, David Spillane, Goody Clancy, um, at Urban Designer on the DOT Consultant Team. Hi, I'm Bill Kenworthy. I'm the Regional Leader of Urban Design for HOK, and we're a um, consultant for the city team. Ben Carlson, Urban Designer with Goody Clancy on the DOT team. Great. Behind me, I have uh, Michael Coulomb and Marcy Miller, uh, both on the uh, consultant team for ID4 and working on public involvement. So. Thank them for the cookies. And uh, Nick Mandler and Tim Ryan over here from Trans Systems as well. Is Dave still here? Dave Snocky? Okay. All right. Well, we have a, um, a relatively simple agenda, but as you'll see as we get into the presentation, there's a lot of complicated content. So we're going to try to get through uh, this in, in a couple hours, but we want you to be interactive with us. Talk to us. I'm going to walk around with a microphone. Um, so if you have any questions, just kind of nod, raise your hand, throw a water bottle at me. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the bigger picture network issues uh, in the city of Hartford. I mean, this is really an important project to help us re sort of reconnect some of the um, neighborhoods that have been you know, di uh, bisected by the highway. Uh, but we also want to talk about how the new railroad station interfaces with this road network. So these are the kind of key aspects of tonight's presentation. Um, we met with this group, or I don't know if any of you were part of these sessions in August, where we, um, we really laid out some of the, the early thinking of the station area design and the road network. Um, we talked about the lowered highway alternative as kind of our preferred highway alternative, but we also talked about the eastern interchange options and the western interchange options, and there was a whole lot of content we, we tried to cover. But since that time, the, over the past three months, we've been really working hard with the city uh, of Hartford's consultant team to try to make sure that the station planning was done in coordination with the, with the road design and the highway design and the rail relocation. It's all important that these are all integrated very closely. Um, we also know that some of the ideas on the interchanges uh, affected some of the neighborhoods and some of the businesses and we met individually with lots of stakeholders to understand what their concerns were and refine our thinking. 
And, and basically, we've been just doing a lot of technical evaluation, um, specifically with the Trident, which as you'll see in this presentation, is a very, very complex intersection that we're still uh, struggling with somewhat, but um, looking for your feedback on tonight. <laughs> So what we want to do is just provide you with an update on our work efforts. We're not here to make decisions necessarily, but we do want to hear what your preferences are, what you like, what you dislike. Um, and uh, if you have any new ideas, we want to explore those and add those into our, our planning so that um, when, we, when we meet with the PAC in another month and we come back to this group in the future, we'll, we'll be able to actually fold in some of your ideas into our work. Um, Casey's going to now jump into some of the um, network uh, issues. Thanks, Mike. And Tom, you can come up here too, because we're going to, Tom and myself, um, I'm going to go through a series of slides kind of uh, outlining some of the different uh, factors in, in kind of the local street network um, that we've been looking at in the last few months. I'm going to start, though, just by kind of resetting the stage. Uh, what's up on the screen here is a, um, our, our lowered highway with a specific set of um, interchange ramps. And this we've kind of identified as, as the best performing, like Mike alluded to, there are, there are three different interchange options on the eastern half of the project that are still under consideration. Um, but we've identified for our, um, our, our primary purpose and need, our traffic operations and safety, mobility, We've identified that, that, that this particular option is essentially the, the best performing. And just to kind of lay the groundwork, you're looking at the eastern half of our project area. This is Broad Street, Farmington Avenue, it intersects with Asylum coming down and down into Asylum Street in downtown. Bushnell Park, the capitals are here. Um, in this northern part of the project uh, area, here's High Street and Ucello Street. These are the areas today where the highway goes under these two streets in that kind of canyon-like setting. And then under the Hartford Tunnel is just here at the, the, the limits of the graphic. So I want to kind of point out some factors that go into our lowered highway alternative. So the first part is we need to relocate the railroad in order to construct the lowered highway alternative. Uh, the railroad is depicted as this red set of lines. It would go underneath Broad Street, Farmington, and Asylum. Rail platforms would be about right here, and then it continues to the north and, and matches up with the existing alignment about here. And so, so where does that compare to where it is today? Today, it swings under I-84, around by Bushnell Park, over Asylum. Here's Union Station right about here. Then it crosses beneath I-84 again, and here's where the two alignments essentially match up. And in order to construct this lowered highway, that, that's really the first thing we need to do, is, is to relocate the railroad so that it would stay on one side of the, of the highway. The alignment of I-84 shown here uh, follows here where my cursor is showing. Now, the, the kind of biggest change from the existing alignment um, in this specific area it's kind of right here near Asylum Street, where we'd shift the highway about 200 feet further to the west. And one of the primary reasons for that is, is this existing horizontal curve right here uh, is, is deficient. It's too tight by today's standards. We've seen a, a pretty high crash rate on that segment, um, and, and we're, we're looking to address that with, with our proposed lowered highway alternative. So within, uh, so that's the highway, that's the railroad we have. We're proposing eastbound off and on ramps to a new road that would connect from Asylum down to Capitol. So we're proposing an eastbound off ramp and an on ramp from there. And then a westbound off ramp and on ramp from this is a relocated Codswell Street. So today Codswell Street comes up here towards Myrtle and Darden. We're proposing to realign it into Edward Street and have westbound off and on ramps there. So within this alternative, I just want to point out a couple new or significantly improved roadway connections versus what we have today. Now, firstly, there's this new road from Capitol to Asylum. This is a new north-south road today. That area is currently occupied by highway ramps. Today you have a, a, a set of ramps that go both to Capitol and to Asylum taking up the space. Uh, so we think this is a great new connection between Capitol and Asylum, helping that north-south mobility. 
The second big piece is the extension of Spruce Street. Today, Spruce Street ends at Church Street, kind of right by Union Station. So we're proposing to extend it up and around to South Chapel Street, which would form more of a continuous roadway network to help distribute traffic. And the final new piece is this east-west road that would connect our new north-south road to Broad Street, really kind of creating a little bit more of a block there. So there will be these new or extended roadways, but also major streets such as Asylum or Broad Street would really be improved in the sense that uh, we're creating a more efficient traffic operations, and that could allow us to narrow the roadways themselves, create better pedestrian, cyclist, and transit user experiences. The one thing I will point out that will come up again as we work through this presentation is that this proposal would make Broad Street discontinuous between Farmington and Asylum Avenue. And I'll explain a little bit more, you know, why we came up with that idea as we go through the presentation. So with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it over to Tom to talk about some of the ways we've been, so some of the ways we've been looking at this uh, to help improve that network, things we could add, things to improve. We both hit it at the same time. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Um, when we got involved in this project, uh, we looked at the goals and objectives that were set forth uh, to implement the IID for uh, relocation and reconstruction. And we, we clued in on, on some goals that we thought were very important to creating that sense of place, to creating the network and really uh, stitching together the two parts of the city that are currently separated by both the rail and the, and the highway. And how can we make sure that as we do this reconstruction, we can stitch those pieces together? And so first and foremost, as we think about this network and we see the, the preferred alignment that Casey walked you through, how can we, within that preferred alignment, look at improving connectivity, creating more east-west connections, and also strengthening the north-south connections so that um, there's more mobility in the area, there's many more options associated with making uh, connections back and forth. And those connections are very important because they help to establish a much stronger sense of place. You want this part of the city to not feel empty, but to feel very much a part of a connected larger city. And so we want to fill in this area in the middle. The highway comes through, the rail comes through. We want to create blocks. We want to create pl places for people to gather. We want, we want spaces for uh, streets for people to walk on. So you really want to think about this as a new place and to create that strong sense of space there. And that also sets the stage for economic opportunity, really taking what is a, a downtown that is strong, but in, enhancing that strength of that downtown, and also the Hill District, which is also strong, and really bringing those two together, and giving a space for development in the middle that can really activate both of those communities and create a much larger connected downtown of the city. And so in looking at the alternative, there's really four areas we've been able to focus on to think about ways in which you can uh, achieve all of those goals. And the first is making a, a connection north of Asylum, between Asylum and Walnut, that helps to build that network in. We're calling it the Garden Street Connection. The second is to reconfigure the alignments of the roads coming in off the off-ramps so that we move traffic through the neighborhoods in the north, uh, nor in the north area uh, in a more effective manner. And the third is coming up with some um, alternative approaches to how we might uh, process traffic, uh, but also create a great space in what the area that we all know is the Trident. And very much connected with that is in the area where the, the, the uh, ramps to the east are coming in. That's a whole new area, new roads. How can we make sure that we enliven that space as well? And so those are the four areas we've been looking at from a network perspective. And I'm going to walk you through with Casey all four of these. So the first is, you know, this Garden Street connection. And we talked um, uh, a lot about, you know, the fact that between Asylum and Walnut, you really don't have any space to cross from the east to the west. And that's a, a long divide um, that really kind of separates the city in, uh, in this area. And we wanted to make sure that we could enhance those connections in a way that works really well for the local street character. and, and um, Although it's a, it's a street that is coming from the hill to the downtown, uh, so it's, it's on an incline, we see an opportunity for a local connection by extending Garden 
uh, to the south and bringing it down, really dead ending into the current Union Station site. Uh, and we see that site as a very important economic draw for the community. And the Garden Street extension, in a lot of ways, I think enhances its ability to be a very successful place um, and also kind of sets up or tees up development just on the other side of Spruce Street around, around, um, around the, the road that may, may not otherwise be as effective. So we see some real opportunities by making this first connection. And um, just to uh, support that a little bit, um, I see some new faces here. And, and so this whole idea of creating a connection from Asylum Hill uh, back down towards downtown, it, it really started because under the lower highway scenario, the existing way that Myrtle Street comes down the hill, um, it, it can't function in the same manner. So today, Nick, I don't know if you could zoom there on your map over here. Um, Myrtle Street kind of winds down. Uh, the hill and then goes underneath the highway so when the highway is lowered all of a sudden that street is at the same elevation as, as where the highway would be so in order to create a connection we now need to go over the highway and then come back down to meet these streets so we we looked at this in, in a few different ways and, and I think finally through the collaborative process we, we, we reached something that we're able to make work from a geometric standpoint because I think, I think we all kind of knew the mobility benefits uh, that were there uh, to be had. Um, so to confirm you know, what Tom is talking about, it's adding redundancy and, and that essentially solves or, or really helps us elsewhere in the project area. So a lot of you know the, the Trident area. So this is where uh, Asylum and Codswell meet, where Farmington and Broad meet. You know, it's, that's a problem today. There's a lot of traffic going through there. So by adding this new way for folks to get east to west uh, between the neighborhoods, it kind of pulls some mobility or pulls some traffic volume out of that really constrained area. We in turn see it not just as that east-west connection, which it, you know is pretty apparent, we see how it can help from a north-south perspective. Um, if you were coming north from Capitol Avenue, you could take this new Road A or Bushnell Park West up to Asylum, and then it, through this new Garden Street extension, you could come all the way up to Asylum Hill. So you, it's, it's also a way to travel from Frog Hollow up to Asylum Hill. So, you know, one thing we do want to consider with that is the, is the steepness of that roadway. Uh, it is going up a hill. Um, it would be the way we've laid it out today would be about the same um, same grade as asylum uh, just next door to it, which is about 7%. And the way we would do that to, to, to reach a grade that low is to raise Spruce Street at this location, so right where the new Garden Street would extend to it, by about four feet. Um, so that's something that we need to continue to evaluate. Union Station, uh, the building kind of directly across from it is historic. We need to ensure that the, the new street, the raising of Spruce Street, uh, would not present a significant visual impact. So that's something we're developing additional graphics and continuing to, to analyze as we move forward. In case you just to make one point on that, if you, if you um, use that station, um, there's actually a staircase that kind of leads up into the station and the, and the ground floor of the station is about eight feet high. Uh, by comparison to the elevation in the park adjacent to it or, or the bus facility area. So although you are raising that road, there's some opportunity there uh, to play with those elevations to still create a great open space and make that connection in. So we wanted to take advantage of some, some topography there where we could. No, that's a good point, Tom. Um, and then I'm going to touch on the second focus area. So this is um, a little bit further north um, in and around uh, Myrtle Street, where Myrtle Street uh, Fraser Place and, and the proposed ramps coming together. Um, under our prior, um, the, the graphic I showed you a few slides ago, the ramps essentially line up with Fraser Place, which brings you up towards the Asylum Hill neighborhood, some of the residential streets. Uh, Nick's got it pulled up uh, on the map kind of there. You can see where that kind of points you down a residential neighborhood. Whereas today, in order to get to that, that major destination you see on the upper left part of the screen is the St. Francis complex. So today the major route there is, is up through Collins Street. So we heard that uh, feedback from the local stakeholders and we, we kind of looked at ways that we could, that we could adjust the road network um, to change that. 
So what we came up with, um, you know, we tried quite a few things um, that were a little bit more complex, and, and ultimately this relatively simple solution, which just takes Myrtle Street, meets it kind of the primary road coming off the ramps. So if you come off the ramps and you go straight, you'll essentially curve around on Myrtle Street, and then you can take your right up to Collins, and that's kind of maintaining the, the, the way traffic today accesses St. Francis and some of those other destinations in that part of Asylum Hill. The added benefit to us was it actually simplified and improved traffic operations. We were taking what were quite a few people that would come straight here and then have to immediately take a left, and all of a sudden it's just one through movement. Uh, so all in all, you know, sometimes a simple solution is really the is really the best one. Casey, quick question: um, What prevents people from taking a right and going up that way? Nothing would prevent them if if there if you were accessing that residential street to go visit someone. Nothing would prevent you. It's more just um, the general layout of the street would discourage. For example, Google Maps, if you were going to St. Francis, would send you probably down Myrtle and around Collins, rather than kind of. It's really about that through traffic and, and kind of trying to create the, the layout of the street that, that, that points you where the network wants you to be. Okay, so it's more of an encouraging design than, uh, okay. So with that, I'm gonna turn you back to Tom who's gonna lay out some, some general opportunities for the, the third focus area. Yeah, and I think the Myrtle Street example is a good one of how we're trying to think about street orientation. Um, a lot of these streets are going to have a lot of vehicles on them, but we still want them to feel like they're streets that are balanced. We want people to feel like they can uh, walk through these communities, that we can bike through these communities. And one area that's uh, a, an area of particular focus, because it currently is an area of great congestion, is the Trident. Um, the area around, I should probably just orient people, maybe you can do it with your pointer. Sure, so we uh, have, um, here's Asylum coming down the hill, Codswell Street, Farmington Avenue then merges with Asylum, and here's Broad Street. So again, we talked about the Trident, and we're kind of talking about this whole box where all these all these roadways come together. And and there really are three parts to it. We, we obviously want to, through this process, improve mobility. We want people to be able to move through this community uh, more easily. But at the same time, we really want to improve the character of the roads uh, in this community. They're very important. They're really the gateway to the city. They're going to be setting up uh, opportunities for the transit center to be built. Uh, we want this to be a much more pedestrian place, uh, a residential place, a place for people to walk. And so we really want to enhance um, the balance of vehicles uh, and bikes and pedestrians. The, uh, and so what we've done uh, in hearing from um, the community and, and, and our stakeholders that you know the Trident is very complex and, we, and we're really trying to understand it. We want to make sure we, we really um, thought through a series of possible options that might be able to enhance all of these characteristics. And so we have four of them that we want to present today for you folks to sort of take, uh, listen to and, and give us your reaction to. Yeah, and, and, and as we weigh those, there's just sort of a couple factors that we you know want to make sure we take into consideration. And, and there is, like Tom mentioned, that, that, that key connection uh, along Broad Street into Codswell. And then as we weigh them, we have identified through our previous um, analysis of alternatives, you know, things that could be fatal flaws. And it's something where if a ramp were to cause a backup back onto the highway, we'd view that as a fatal flaw. <coughs> Same thing if, if individual intersections have over 120 seconds of average delay. And what that basically means is the average person rolling up to an intersection would have to wait through an entire traffic signal cycle. Um, and that's something we, we, we also viewed as a fatal flaw. Um, and then so as we evaluate these four options, um, which are the first one is, and we'll go through these all individually, one is what we call the discontinuous broad street. I kind of mentioned that when I went through the alternative a few slides ago. Uh, we've also looked at what if we extended Farmington Avenue here down to the south? What if we, it didn't come together with asylum? We've also looked at providing a roundabout at that, at that intersection, as well as, you know, what if we shifted where Asylum and Farmington come together a little bit to the west and kind of separated the intersections out a little bit more. Uh, <clears throat> Casey, excuse me. Just to back up a minute, um, wh what are the reasons that we're actually looking at these different options at the Trident? Sure. The, the short answer is it does not operate well. It, um, the traffic operations today 
are very poor. You know, people who drive there during, particularly during the PM peak period, uh, but the AM as well. Uh, the intersections tend to back up into each other, which causes snowballing delay, where you can basically try and go through there and end up sitting through several red light cycles just to even get through one intersection and then get stuck right at the next intersection. Are there a lot of crashes as well? There are, and the, the city is currently put in a, a plan to um, uh, make a slight change to Asylum Avenue that they think might really help the, 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 the safety conditions. And it's, it's an easy fix, uh, but as we kind of continue moving forward, uh, you know, with some potential changes in travel patterns, we see some other kind of bigger opportunities here. Uh, it's also not a great place. It's not a good area to walk through. It's not a great area to drive through. It doesn't have a gateway feel to it at all. Um, so in addition to being unsafe, there's a uh, there's even a public space kind of right in the middle. It's a kind of a paved area that I guarantee no pedestrian has been at in a very long time. And so you have to combine those thoughts about making it safer, making traffic move faster. But it's also a very important part of the city. You really want it to be that gateway that you're trying to achieve. Yeah, and it's crazy that that, that is actually a, an actual park um, that, that very few people get to access. So, so the first, the discontinuous Broad Street is this notion of uh, if you take out this link uh, along Broad and Cogswell um, and have traffic uh, processed through this community without cutting across Broad and Cogswell, it actually has some tremendous uh, benefits in terms of um, traffic uh, throughput, um, and it, it it, in the area of the Trident, in the area that we're looking at, it allows us to think about the roadway design with smaller cross sections. So the roads are not as impassable. The lane widths are not as, the, the number of lanes are, are somewhat smaller. So by, by doing this, you create the opportunity now to think about these street designs as a little more pedestrian oriented, a little more balanced, um, making connections with bikes and peds. So that uh, immediately struck us as, a, as an option that's worth pursuing. Sure, and, and you know, some of you might be thinking, you know, how the heck is that ever going to work? Um, basically, when today a lot of that traffic that uses Broad Street in the afternoon is coming down the hill uh, to get to this eastbound on ramp that Nick's kind of showing you over here. Well, under this lower highway scenario, we're proposing to relocate that ramp uh, over here towards this new Road A or Bushnell Park West. And that makes for a big change in travel patterns and really takes a lot less stress off that north-south movement. We still have a really big set of vehicles that want to go east-west through both of these corridors, but it does take a little pressure off that north-south connection. And as, as Tom pointed out, not only does it operate well, but it operates so efficiently that it operates well with smaller roadways. We're, we're able to f have less lanes on these roads, which can make them more comfortable places for bicyclists, pedestrians, and transit users. And then the key point that we like to make is that there would still be a, a north-south bicyclist and pedestrian connection between these two streets. It wouldn't, it would only be cut off to vehicles. And, and in fact, like Tom mentioned, that space in there that's currently really not usable, um, there could be opportunity to expand that, um, kind of expand the two parks that are currently on either side of Broad Street kind of into one, one nicer place. So, uh, you know, and, and we've, we've been presenting this for a while now, and there's been some pushback on the, the idea of closing Broad Street, and that's something that we wanted to kind of continue the conversation on, especially with this new addition of Garden Street, right? The, the idea I presented a few slides ago where we're looking to make that connection between Spruce and, and Codswell Street. So, you know, we think the idea of adding that can help um, mitigate that closure because now there's another way to get from Fraud Hollow up to Asylum Hill. Does that make sense to everybody? I, it's one of the things we... So, so show me how you get on to 84 with that piece being closed off. Where are you coming from? Well, let's say the Hartford. You'd be coming down Codswell Street to make a left on Asylum, make a right down this new road, and come onto the ramp to go east. Okay, how about west? I need to zoom out. Bear with me. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, do you want to? So it depends on which lot you're coming from, but essentially the, the answer is you get on to, uh, to Myrtle Street or to um, Cogswell Street. The ramp is right up here. Okay. And, and 
What about the fact that you're sending a whole lot of cars back into Hartford as all the cars are trying to get out of Hartford? Sure, that's a good question. So, you know, we think that the, the way this street is now set up, um, you'll have most of those cars that are coming out of Hartford, a lot of them will be making this turn down here. So they won't really be conflicting. The, the biggest movement um, is for folks to try and get on I-84 East during the afternoon. Because not only does it serve I-84 East, it serves I-91 North and South as well. So we think that uh, essentially what you'll have is, is cars coming from Asylum Hill or Aetna or, or the Hartford coming down and making a right. And a lot of that traffic from downtown will be coming up here and taking a left. And that doesn't really put them in conflict. Exactly, and so if you're, if you're coming down this way, it's basically two rights to get to the ramp, whereas today you have to come down here and turn left, which is one of the big causes of uh, the poor traffic operations that we see today. Oops. So, but, we have but, one more, one oh, more question? Hi there. Uh, I have a question about uh, a lot of West Hartford sir, is reached by the asylum exit. I'd say everything from Asylum North is reached. So just show me how, how do we get to West Hartford from the Asylum exit? Sure, so that there's sort of two ways that you could do that. One would be you could get off on this Todswell Street exit, you take a left, and that would bring you right down to Asylum. And it's, it's, you basically pass through one more intersection than you would pass through today if you get off at Asylum Street. The other option, and you know, we think with some of the changes to the network, that Sydney Street might operate a little bit better. So that that exit ramp would still be open. You could potentially uh, take that and then come north on Sydney Street, depending on where you're going. Yeah, and then if you're if you're you know somebody who might take the Sisson Avenue ramps today, we do have a proposed new Western interchange that would access straight to Capitol Avenue. And then we've added a new east-west road in that area of the project um, that could also help um, get you to destinations west. You can also mention too. I could also mention Homestead too. Apparently, there's a lot of ways, Lance. Does that does that answer your question? Or yeah. <laughs> okay. Anybody so, else? So again. So again, recognizing that that. Um, a lot of people saw the Cogswell Broad connection as a very important connection, and we want to, you know, again try to achieve those goals. But the, you know, there's that kind of um, break in the network, and is there a way to kind of think about how you can continue to keep that? We've been thinking of some other ideas, and one of them would be um, part of the reason that that the area is 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 so challenged is because Farmington and Asylum come together. Maybe there's a way that we could keep them separate, uh, extend Farmington further to the south, uh, further to the east, and bring it down to this new Bushnell Park West uh, roadway. Um, by extending Farmington, you're changing kind of the character of the neighborhood. You're also changing the way people may, may travel through the neighborhood. It's an intriguing um, opportunity, uh, one that we liked and continue to like because of the ability to kind of bring Farmington down to Bushnell Park West, creating kind of really great development opportunity, really strengthening Farmington as this kind of gateway roadway. Um, the goal of trying to connect Farmington all the way down to Bushnell and still continue to have Broad and Cogswell connect is, is, is also very challenging, though, because the distance between these two intersections, Asylum and Farmington, is still very close. Um, and really, that the, the larger problem is the queuing and the backup at that location. So it may well be that uh, Farmington extension, while it might, might be a really great idea and could work, it may actually continue without even having this connection as well. So it, it, the initial intent of doing it to keep the connection, uh, it may still be a great idea or a way to approach this, but it may also be something that we ultimately do so these two roads parallel each other all the way down to Bushnell Park West. And in that regard, I don't think it does work quite as well from a traffic operations perspective, and that's something we have to, we have to look at, at more. But again, what we're trying to do here is come up with ways to kind of fix um, the travel movement, but also create great places. And the extension of Farmington has some real value, especially when you think about how to kind of activate this space a little bit to the south. Tom, you mentioned queuing at those closely spaced intersections. I assume what you mean is that vehicles in the north-south Broad Street uh, section 
waiting at lights spill back through the intersection and block the intersection? Is that more or less what happens? Correct. Uh, to, to make um, Farmington happen, one of the things that we've been looking at is uh, relocating the ramping system uh, that is on the east side of the highway, pushing it further to the south where it will connect to what are the extended roads down to Capitol. And so uh, the reason for doing that is to create enough space in this area to bring Farmington through and also to create opportunities to uh, create open space and development in that area. And essentially, like Tom said, our, our next steps on this are really um, sharpening our pencils and taking a close look as to whether that type of shift to the to the on and off ramp intersection is something that, from a traffic perspective, we could live with in terms of whether or not the, the ramps would potentially queue back uh, onto the highway. So the, the third uh, thought process was, can you kind of reconfigure the way the asylum and Farmington come together? Um, there's a lot of uh, people who, who uh, you know, think that, and you know, roundabouts are a, a very interesting way to kind of process traffic, uh, often a very effective way. And it, it kind of depends on the volumes and the space that you have. Um, and so uh, based upon community input, we started thinking, well, is there a way to kind of think about processing people through the Trident using a roundabout or using a traffic circle? Um, and, and you know, it does have some really gr great gateway possibilities and, and in, in some manifestations can work well for pedestrians and some manifestations it does not work well for pedestrians. And I think this, this is one where if you really look at the goals we're trying to achieve, um, y there are some considerations there in terms of how much space it takes up, whether or not pedestrians can move through the area. Are we really achieving the goal we set out to by kind of creating the roundabout? But Casey, maybe you can kind of yeah, go into more detail. Th that's absolutely true. And, and you know, kind of the two other benefits that we touch on are the, are the potential to control speeds. Um, you know, as, as almost a gateway, you, you need to slow down to circulate around the roundabout. So that's something that, that communities have found helpful uh, on these types of roadways that enter a city. Uh, and then there's safety. Roundabouts, single lane roundabouts have been found to, to reduce crashes uh, when compared with a kind of signalized four way intersection. So, you know, we took a look. You know, I, I, we totally understood why people wanted us to take a look at this. Um, in terms of traffic volumes, um, we're almost double um, the threshold for what the maximum is for a single lane roundabout. So we kind of had to take a look and, and add some lanes to ensure that um, the traffic, the roundabout would work successfully. And, you know, unfortunately, what we came up with is pretty complicated. So as you can see, it sort of looks like a mythic sea creature. Um, and as complex as it looks from above, you can probably imagine as a driver trying to figure out what lane you needed to be in, where you need to get out, would be really challenging. Um, on top of that, this would really impede mobility for bicyclists and pedestrians. It'd be really hard either as a cyclist to try and navigate this, or even as a pedestrian to, to cross some of these approaches where you've got multiple lanes that theoretically wouldn't be wouldn't have any stop control. Um, so you know, ultimately, our, our, our thought on this was that um, it's really not recommended. The complexity um, and then the, the kind of impringement upon uh, mobility for bicyclists and pedestrians kind of just, this isn't the best place in the project area to have a roundabout. We're going to continue to look at ways to, uh, to, to look at different intersections that, that might work a little bit better. In Casey, isn't there pretty high pedestrian demand at that intersection as well? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, even dating back to the hub study, you know, years ago, the, the idea of better pedestrian accommodations from Asylum Hill, both along Asylum and Farmington, down towards downtown was always something that has been a big priority. So, yeah, that, that, that would be a challenge here. I, I think the notion of, of trying to create the... Um, roundabout or the traffic circle in that location was again to try to create the connection east-west and also uh, uh, alleviate traffic at the Asylum Farmington interchange and it spurred a lot of a, a, a additional kind of creative thinking about well maybe if we think a little differently about this intersection maybe there are other ways that we can solve the problem and so you know the, the, the members of the team kind of put their heads together and said what if we shifted the Farmington Asylum uh, 
Y connection further to the west, pushed it up the hill a little further, far enough away from Broad Street and Cogswell that we could continue to have the Y, but then also have the Y then feed into an east-west connection. And this is something that we've come up with relatively recently, but it has some really interesting merit to it, and it definitely, in our mind, um, you know, warrants uh, further consideration because if, if we are able to improve traffic um, we, we create a significant amount of additional opportunity for open space in an area that, you know, really the area, the triangle in between Asylum and Farmington is not a very um, uh, great public space at the moment. It's, it's the DAS parking garage space. Obviously, the DAS parking garage will be affected by this, but maybe there's an opportunity there associated with this Y that we can kind of achieve some of the open space opportunities that we might want to try to uh, achieve in this area. Again, the biggest challenge here is going to be, you know, what is the, the character of the road in between, you know, this broad Cogswell connection and where Asylum and Farmington hit. We, we're trying to create uh, balanced streets, and does this, in a, in a sense, not do that? But I think there are ways that we can design for that as well, and so I think it's something that we're uh, strongly considering. Yeah, and, and to Tom's point, um, you know, basically, the, you know, one of the genesis, gen genesis for this was the, because in the discontinuous Broad Street option, this kind of intersection had worked so well, it operated so efficiently. Our thought was, what if we move it west, do we keep this open? So ultimately what it's doing is it's funneling a lot of traffic from both of these two roadways in through this intersection. And so as a result, to, to kind of meet a minimum level of operations, we'd need probably a seven lane cross section on this piece of roadway. So four lanes eastbound, three lanes westbound. So that's a really significant um, stretch of roadway. It would feel really car-centric when you're on it. To Tom's point, we would have quite a bit of space, both to the north and to the south of the road, to maybe create some better environments from a pedestrian standpoint. Um, the other thing we've looked at to try and mitigate the size of that roadway are, is potentially extending Sumner Street. Nick, if you can pull it up over there. Currently, Sumner Street comes down from the north and ends at Asylum. Um, if that were to be extended by one block to Farmington, that would actually help us um, uh, manage traffic a little bit more efficiently and we'd be able to reduce the width of this one roadway segment by a lane. So it would be a total of six lanes. So still a large roadway, um, but just some ways on the table that we can look to try and mitigate for that. It looked like there might have been some question over there. Was there any? Okay. You sure. Anybody else? Under this under this scenario, that would be the yeah. So the the one last little piece to to discuss on this one is is the potential impact to the DAS parking garage. So the alignment of this this new roadway would take it right right through the middle. This is a a parking structure that when you drive by it, it actually just looks like a parking lot, but it's actually got several subterranean levels and and over 500 parking spaces. So, you know, as, as we continue to evaluate this option, we're starting to look at whether those subterranean levels could be kept and we could provide a new way to access those, uh, or whether it would be a, a, an acquisition of that garage and it would be no longer viable. So that's something our structural engineers have started to look at, sort of whether that garage could support the weight of a roadway above it. Um, and then just continuing to look at um, how this operates because, as I mentioned, there's a lot of traffic trying to get through this eastbound and to make sure that, you know, we effectively manage how traffic could back up into this intersection, something we want to be wary of. So, Casey, if I could just sort of recap, just trying to understand, it sounds like this could be a potentially expensive option. It can move the problem in terms of the vehicle back up a little bit to the west and potentially even block Broad Street and not make it a more pedestrian-friendly road. I mean, what, what's to like about this option? I think what's to like about it is it, it's one of the key ways to keep that north-south connection open. For Broad Street? For Broad Street. One other, one other uh, point on that is as you think about the larger network, um, some of the streets that Casey had talked about being new streets that we're going to build, there won't be as much traffic on those streets. So there is sort of, uh, these are all trade-offs. And I think you have to think about where you're trying to process the traffic through. So more traffic up here means less traffic down here. So there's ways in which you can kind of look at where you're balancing um, where you're trying to move 
uh, automobiles through the, through the system and what are the best streets to do it. Now, another point to that is these streets are going to be new streets. So we have the ability to design them in a way that we can accommodate maybe larger volumes and more lanes in a way that really make them great urban streets, urban boulevards. We can also do the same here, uh, potentially. So I think a part of the decision here has to be part of, partly thought about in how well can it be designed. So we've got um, basically four options. I mean, there's a few other permutations of these, but um, we want to have a, just a little discussion before we move on beyond the Trident because we know this is such a big topic <laughs> for a lot of people who live in the city and deal with this intersection on a daily basis. Um, I, I think there might be a set of questions. Um, maybe not. Nope. Sorry. Are there any of these that sort of jump out at you as uh, uh, options that you, you really like, ones that you just think we shouldn't even be looking at anymore? Yeah. This intersection every morning. Um, I actually like the Western ship, especially if we can extend Sumner all the way to Farmington. I think that would actually you know, work really well because the amount of traffic that piles up turning off of Asylum onto Cogswell, trying to get across to Broad to get onto 84, it, it's really a nightmare and sometimes you're caught in that intersection and then everybody's flying down at you. So I think if it went a little further back and the streets could accommodate more cars, it'd probably actually work. I would, I would add too that the potential extension of Sumner could, could actually be added to any of them. In this particular case, there's a very easy way to quantify how it would help, but it, it's something that we could consider under each of the each of the four scenarios. Is there any reaction to the one where Broad Street becomes just a bike and pedestrian link and discontinued the traffic? Um, I think as these guys mentioned, it works pretty well from a traffic perspective. It narrows the streets and makes them a little bit more pedestrian friendly, but it might preclude that direct vehicle movement north-south. You might have to do it a different way. Is there any, any thoughts and reaction about that? I know Jennifer's reaction, but you're well... The Won't there be a lot less traffic if the highways, the ex, the um, ramp is in a different location? I don't, I mean, people go that way all day long, all day long, not just at rush hour. Um, I don't understand why you want to cut another street off that connects us north-south. And you've cut Flower Street, remember, and promised me Broad Street. So, um, you know, I won't, won't forget that, as will all the other people that can't go down Flower Street anymore. So. Um, well, what are the traffic counts? Who, who's going to go that way now? So you're right, traffic patterns are going to change. It's not necessarily that they just go down everywhere. It's really traffic getting moved. Um, and a lot of people, because of the new connections we're making, have easier routes to get from point A to point B. Uh, this is probably the rare case in the project where we would lose a continuous route if we went with this. Uh, as for the traffic patterns, one thing to keep in mind today is we have the, the freeway on-ramp on Broad Street. Uh, but under future conditions, about 80% of the traffic would be going east-west through here. And cutting this off only negatively impacts about a quarter of it. Uh, some of that might be, for example, coming down Asylum from West Hartford and want to go south on Broad Street. In which case, they just have to take a right one street sooner than they do today. Or if you have people coming from the neighborhood, instead of going straight down Capitol Ave, they might take the Garden Street extension and then take the new road on the west side of the park. So you, yeah, there, most of the traffic there is going east-west, but there is a substantial minority that does, that does go on to go north-south. So I know Jennifer did come in after you presented this concept. Just recap that new north-south connection with Garden. I think it's important to show that again. Sure. So the you know the idea here is um, that Garden Street. I'm going to go back a few slides just to the talking points. Um, okay. Were there any other thoughts on this one? Oh, you had a different one. That's fine. I, I'm kind of intrigued by the uh, extending Farmington Avenue one um, because you get to keep. Cogswell, you keep, you keep the Broad Street connected. Um, you then now give them 
give uh, those of us driving either direction two streets to choose from to head either way and both streets gets us to the new exit and entrance ramps um, so I'm kind of intrigued by this one sure um, I, I just want to add that our preliminary traffic analysis indicated we might need as many as eight lanes to manage the queuing on this roadway segment between Broad and, or between Asylum and Farmington. So I don't know if that changed your answer. Well, have you priced the, the options? I mean, is there any kind of a cost? We don't have a price comparison. Um, the Farmington extension would add a separate bridge over the highway, so that you know might be a, a determining a, a slight difference. But, but in the order of magnitude of the project, the difference is probably relatively small between these between these respective options. Casey, okay, so when you say eight lanes, do you just mean between the Broad Street section between Farmington and Asylum or the whole thing? Just four lanes in each direction on this segment here. And then so, you know, the approaches okay. are significant too as they lead up, but not not any of them would add to eight. I had a thought with <coughs> what you have here a different uh, kind of area. I, I never really liked the way that that exit was going to come right into the park. So, irregardless of the farms and extension, I kind of like the exit going a little off the park. Uh, and that's more at the hill of the Capitol, because uh, that, that's, that's always bothered me, that it's going to go right kind of where the uh, amphitheater is over there. I, I think one of the things that we're, we're trying to recognize is if you have the ability to build new roads in this in this quadrant, you really want to take advantage of Bushnell Park, and we want to try to uh, create opportunity there for Bushnell Park to be a place where people gather, but also as a, a setup to extend your connections uh, between the the south and the and the east and the west. And and the reason Farmington is is intriguing to us is it it, it allows for this space. Um, to be a, a site that really can have new development take place in it, and possibly even the space on this side. With the ramps coming down in the middle, we have to really think a little harder about how can we, if we bring the ramps in, create these as really strong development sites. And I think our first thought is, well, if we can ex extend the network, we have a better opportunity to do that. If we can't, we have to think about how we can create a really great street that really fronts on Bushnell that allows for those ramps to come in, which I think we can do, but that's just one thought with Farmington. Okay, um, well we can circle back to Trident options later if anyone's interested. I think, I think this is uh, the, probably the intersection treatment that challenged us the most as a team. We've been working really hard on it and as you can see there, there's a lot of trade-offs to consider. But um, in the meantime, we still want to consider the relationship of the, uh, uh, of the Asylum Hill, the, the, the ramping system, um, and what we can do to that area so that when those ramps do touch down wherever they might be, that that's just not um, you know, a barren space, that we can activate that and make it part of, of kind of a, you know, a nice urban space. We also want to make sure that all the streets are right size so pedestrians can use them. We want to make sure that development is teed up for the city. So there's a lot of competing interests in this whole area. And I think there's some ideas that, that are intriguing to us that we're going to continue to explore. And I'll, I'll let Tom go ahead and tell us about those. Yeah, so if, if you kind of remember back to Mike's very first slide, talking about uh, all of these different areas, this is the fourth of kind of four areas where we're trying to now begin to refine that roadway network, make some key uh, strategic additions that can help increase mobility. Uh, and it all works as a network. And one of the areas that we see is vitally important is this space that really separates Bushnell Park from the north, uh, from the from the west side of, of of the city? If this is a big open space that is not activated, it's going to feel like a very much of a divide within the city. And it's right at Asylum. It's an important corridor. What can we do to really, again, kind of make a visible front door with the park views? Take advantage of Bushnell Park. Um, this could be some of the nicest um, real estate in the, in, the, in the downtown of the city uh, if, if thought about in the right way. So how can we, under any scenario really where we kind of develop the Trident, what can we do to kind of activate this space? Because we know we're still refining that option. And so a couple of moves were ones that we thought might be real critical and helpful. 
the first is because the new uh, Road A and Road B are new streets, um, we have an opportunity to make that a really great place. Not just a street that connects people or a street that handles traffic, but a great urban boulevard that fronts on a great park. Um, and so, because it is a new street, even if it does handle a fair amount of traffic, um, that street can probably be a really well-designed uh, street that handles a lot of pedestrian activity and bicycle ac activity, irrespective of the lane width for the, or the number of lanes for cars. Another thought is if, as we look at uh, CT Fast Track, and bringing CT Fast Track into the downtown of Hartford is another piece to this transit mobility center that we're talking about. There's an opportunity here to integrate CT Fast Track in with this Bushnell Park West road uh, design. So while we call them Road A and Road B, we really see this as a network of new streets and we have to think very carefully about how they're designed. The second is something that, we, that, that, that you actually brought up in your question, is that if we shift the lanes uh, over um, and connect them directly up to what are kind of the current off-ramp lanes down to Capitol Avenue, uh, how does that maybe free up more space um, and really, uh, again, make the extension of Bushnell Park into this area really important? Especially as we think about the Capitol itself and the view shed and the view quarters and the open spaces that we could create, we want to try to optimize how that really fits in. And this shift of the highway ramp itself, although challenging because it really inhibits the queuing distance coming off the highway and something we really have to consider, uh, it has some advantages from a placemaking perspective that we're really interested in. And then the third would be, in some manner, like with the extension of Farmington, or maybe even creating a local road under some of the scenarios that we're talking about, can we replicate this kind of extension of garden on the south side of Asylum and really kind of create these bookended um, roadways that take some of the load off of Asylum traffic create more opportunities for people to move through the community and kind of create a hierarchy of roads that begin to make it feel like an urban place, an urban network. Um, when you have this many roads connected up and you have development moving along them, I don't think people will still see this I-84 area as a, as, a, as a divide between downtown and Asylum Hill. And that's what we're really trying to conquer here. So we have to deal with topography. And one of the best ways to deal with that is to make as many connections as you can. And so those are some of the thoughts about how might we activate this space here as a real critical piece of this entire network. And so we've uh, obviously there are challenges associated with this, uh, not least of which is kind of, you know, the 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 traversing of this road as a pedestrian, it's gonna be a steep street, as is Asylum, as would Garden be. So we have to make them really great streets. Um, the shifting of the highway ramps is, is a big challenge, um, and it's something that we, we can't take lightly. The, the fact that they come into a four-way intersection now is even more challenging. So uh, we're not making it easy on our traffic guys to try to make this happen, but um, it's something to, to consider. So what, what we wanted to do is we want to make sure that as this process moves forward, because there's still a lot of design that, that needs to happen, we don't want to uh, put ourselves in a situation where we put out options and then we have to preclude them. And so what we're trying to do is come up with some initial thoughts about, uh, these are really diagrams of how the network might work um, under a bunch of different scenarios with the Triton. This is the first scenario is that the, uh, the interruption of Broad and Cogswell. And in that, in that regard, if we can move the ramps, we could create a local street that just kind of connects in between Bushnell Park West and Broad. Um, under the, the notion of extending Farmington, and, and we chose in this, this pattern kind of um, a, a design where we may have to really look carefully about having Bushnell Park West extend all the way and have this connection in, but there's still some real interesting opportunities there for creating an extension of Farmington and, and, and kind of changing the complexion of how the whole Trident works and, and, and really activating the space as well. And then the third option would be if you do push the Trident to the west, um, again, now you've really got a grid. You know, now you can see how you've got all these different areas that can be uh, shaped, um, created into street blocks um, and, and a grid forming in this network of of the whole downtown and the, and, the, and the Hill District kind of connecting together. And so our next steps on this would be to begin to really assess the viability of the relocation of the ramps. What does it do to traffic? How 
can that work under what scenarios can it work with the Trident? Um, and that, that they, they are definitely connected um, and Garden really is part of that too. When you start thinking about the whole network, how does traffic work? That's really the most important part. Um, and then I think we have to start thinking about how this roadway aligns, Bushwell Park, Bushnell Park West. What does it look like? Um, where does it touch down? There's vertical issues too because you can raise this road up, you can push it a little further to the east. So there's a lot of ways in which we can play with this, this extension road and the Bushnell Park West Road to really make it into a great street. So our next step is really to dive in a little deeper and look at this in section and look at this in plan and think about how CT Fast Track might align with this, what this road would look like, whether it's an active pedestrian place, is there a cycle track on one side? What does the public realm look like, even though it's a boulevard? Is it a central tree-lined street? Are the trees on the side? Are there wide sidewalks? That kind of thing. I think that'll give everyone a better sense of what we're trying to create. Great. So we, uh, we do want to move on in a minute to station uh, areas. Uh, that's another big piece, as if the street network wasn't enough to, to deal with. We also have to figure out how it relates with the station. Um, but, but just to recap here, do, how do you, any of you feel about the north-south opportunities uh, or even the east-west opportunities that are created with some of these new streets? Is there, did we hit some home runs here? Is, are we still lacking uh, in, in connectivity? Any other thoughts on that? The more north-south, the better. Yeah, and how do you feel about the Garden Street connection to the new uh, Bushnell Park West? Um, which one was that? Was that, the, was that number four that came down? So the, the Garden Street connection is actually the first one we showed, which is the road to the north of Asylum. Okay. Uh, Garden actually dead ends up at Cogswell now, or Edwards, I guess, at the moment. And what we're looking to do is is pull that down and have a dead end right across from the um, from the current Union Station. Kind of replacing Myrtle, but pulling it in closer to Asylum. Okay, so that hill where Capitol West, the Capitol West building used to sit, is that going to be somehow... Um, even leveled oh, how does it work with that street coming down that way Are you so the new the old building was basically right where my cursor is so it, it, it's really the space oh. that it occupies with the railroad would be reconstructed there and, and the highway it would actually be lowered pretty significantly <laughs> and then on kind of the the left as you're looking side of the railroad corridor it would be like a retaining wall up to the level that um that the ground is now Ability wise from the station up this new Garden Street back into that neighborhood. It won't be as steep as it is now going up around the railroad tracks up, Mur what is that, Myrtle? Up Myrtle? It would be a pretty similar grade to Myrtle, but the one thing I would mention is that there are some different locations in play for the relocated train station that actually, if you're, if you're looking at a walk from the station, to Asylum Hill might actually make it easier just purely because of where the new station might be located, just a little bit closer and up the hill. I'm sorry, I'm really visual. Where are you, where are you thinking for the new station? Um, just with this particular road configuration? We actually have like a whole hour conversation. Oh. On it. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't possibly do it justice I'll in one answer. It in 50 minutes. All right, so I won't, I won't have you do that, but um, okay, so it sounds like that would be not as steep, and so those of us who like to park and travel will be fine getting up that hill without... I, it, it would be as steep as Asylum is today. So it's, it's, it's generally traversing the same hill, right? Asylum, Asylum Hill is sort of the same elevation over here, yeah, and you're coming up from the bottom. Myrtle. And it's a little more direct. Okay. I think it would feel a little more directly connected between the hill and the downtown. And there are some, so, you know, basically we've, we've got one idea that works. There's some different iterations we could do that basically we're looking at potentially raising Spruce Street about four feet, kind of where it's in front of Union Station. We'd match in at Asylum. We'd match in at Church. Um, some of that stuff could be dynamically worked on. The higher we'd raise that, the flatter that street could be. So it's, it's really just a, 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 an assessment of trade-offs. So I'm not sure how I would be able to answer the question he asked, which is um, if I would like that north-south version. I think like with that whole area, if we're looking at making it more walkable for those of us who like to not pay to park down there and travel, that would work. But the more connections we have going north-south, I think would be really great because at this point, 
Sigourney has a lot of traffic. Laurel has that cutoff. Sisson is a nightmare. And, you know, sometimes you don't want to go directly north-south. You want to go north-south-west. So the more options we have to go north-south would be great. Sure, and we, it hasn't been, you know, we've been focusing really on this area today, but uh, Laurel Street, Sisson Avenue could also be changed pretty significantly by this project. And Sisson Avenue, I would think, you know, pretty much for the better. I think Sisson Avenue would see a lot less traffic um, as a result of the change in the Western interchange options. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, just a question, is the east-west traffic that's closing down the intersection at Broad and Asylum 24-7 or t uh, every day, or every minute, I mean, is the traffic all the time or are we accommodating just rush hour? Uh, you're right, it's not 24-7. You can go through there at 3 a.m. and there's pretty much nobody there. <laughs> 12 noon, there's a decent amount, but it's not going to back up very far. We're doing it for five hours a day, give or take, yeah. But those are five hours that it could back up to the freeway, which is a major safety concern of ours. It does, and that's a problem. <laughs> we have spots on the freeway that are four times uh, what the statewide average is for crash rates. Okay, um, great. With that, well, we're gonna move on and talk a little bit about some of the station area uh, concepts. Um, Gina will walk you through some of those. But David, may have, yes, thank you. And I'd like to call up David Spillane from Goody Clancy and Bill Kenworthy from HOK, who's a city's consultant. We'll do kind of a joint presentation here about the um, station planning. So at our last workshop, we did review um, the station siting, how important it was to locate the station in an area that would promote and encourage economic development. For those of you who are either new or um, uh, don't recall exactly where the station um, location um, or station area is, uh, the study area is on the west is Cogswell, on the east it's Union Station, and then it's on the other side, the north or the south of Asylum. That's what we're looking for, kind of a 20 acre site. As background, the tracks that are currently serving Union Station are gonna be moved about 2,000 feet to the west prompting the need for a new rail station um, west of where the current Union Station is. And then we're looking at different iterations for the bus and the rail facilities in that uh, project area. Gina, can I just take a quick minute to sure. um, let everybody know we're, we're handing out some of the, uh, the five station concepts we're gonna talk about, and there's also an evaluation sheet I don't know if you want to explain that or you want me evaluation to. Evaluation criteria. Oh, go ahead. Uh, well, Mike. Just the, it's a little bit, in, um, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, so anyway, the, the evaluation criteria, and there's also a, ra a ranking sheet. Mm -hmm. um, please look at that. Feel free to, um, as you hear Gina's presentation, ask a lot of questions. You're welcome to fill that out and give us your idea of, of or, uh, your ranking of what you like the best. And we will, again, use that feedback as we move forward in the planning process. I just wanted to let you know, um, we will be explaining it so that you, know, you don't have to rely on those tiny little graphics. But hopefully, after the presentation, you'll have a better sense of what's going on. You'll be able to fill that out. And you can return it to us tonight, or we can give you an address where you can you know, mail it or, or contact us. Okay, right, thank thanks. you. So at the last meeting, again, we uh, discussed the siting of the station to s some degree and how it fits best with the different types of land uses. We reviewed the conceptual master plan options the city's consultants have been working on, and we previewed some station concepts. And today, we'd like to um, reflect on what we heard uh, and how that changed um, and um, helped refine our station concepts, discuss those station concepts. We're, um, we have five to discuss. And ideally, we'd like to start reducing that number from five to one. <laughs> so any input you can give us tonight uh, would be appreciated. So this is not an eye test. You don't have to really look at this. But last time we presented seven concepts, six on the north side of Asylum, again, between Cogswell and Union Station, and one on the south. And the south actually had been recommended by uh, um, members of the public. So because originally we were just looking on the north side of Asylum, so we did introduce the south side of Asylum. We've uh, continued to refine that based on uh, additional public input we've gotten. And we've um, refined some of the north side um, 
concepts from the city consultants' ideas also. So out of the five we're presenting, three have been developed because of input we're getting from um, stakeholders as well as uh, the city's consultant. We do have evaluation criteria. This is the evaluation criteria we feel is critical to start identi uh, identifying and formulating your opinion on how um, well each of the concepts uh, fits on the site. Um, and I'll have um, one of you to kind of go over a little bit, but basically we're talking station design, operational efficiency, site content sensitivity, how well the station supports economic development, and walkability. We've heard a uh, critical need that the station needs to be walkable and bikeable. So keep that in mind as you're um, reviewing the station concepts. I don't know if there's anything you want to add. Sure, and um, you know, I won't review the great goals that we've got up here, but really, you know, what this station wants to do. It wants to set the tone for the new transit uh, district that we're creating here in the master plan and the opportunity to, to help um, Hartford be more resilient for the long term in terms of the economic challenges it has today. How can we create a district that's going to attract development? How can we create a district that has a great iconic train station that's going to be, you know, a piece of architecture you can stick in the ground and say, this is the new district we're creating here day one? And how we can use the public spaces around it, which are consistent with great train stations around the world to have these great civic spaces nearby that help set up the experience both from the public side but also as you arrive from that station to create a gateway here in Hartford. And that's really the, some of the goals that we're trying to assemble here today that we're putting in front of you is how do we make that great piece of architecture that's, that's part of the civic fabric and help set up the tone for the new district we're creating. Thank you. So a few things as I go through the concepts just so people understand that um, Four out of the five concepts will require phasing. And by phasing, what I'm talking about is at the beginning of the project, the construction of the tra uh, tracks will go first. So the tr uh, tracks will be moved from their current location, again, 2,000 feet west approximately. And at that time, you could construct the rail station. Any of the concepts that rely on an overbuild over the depressed highway will have to come later once the highway is lowered. And at that point in time, um, a cap would have to be constructed, again, either on the north side or the south side asylum, and then you would have your uh, train and bus facility um, over that cap. So that could be um, several years between in terms of a phasing approach. When we look at the concepts, the icons are going to be the same. So the purple uh, reflects the tra train and bus station um, depending on the scenario. So in this case, this is the train station. This would be uh, a separate bus facility. In this concept, we're talking about the bus uh, facility um, just northeast of the train station. The tracks are here in case you're trying to orient. Let me just try and orient you. These are the new tracks. Okay, this is Asylum Street, right across. My little, okay, this is Spruce. The existing Union Station is over here, and then Cogswell is the street to the west. So just orienting you, this, uh, again, the train station would be planned with a plaza in front, fronting asylum. The orange reflects like a kiss and ride area where people would pat, um, drop off uh, station passengers. Garden Street, the new Garden Street that Casey had identified would be bisecting the area to the north. The bus plaza and bus layout facility, I should say, would be to the northeast with a separate bus facility potentially. The bus um, facility would accommodate the inner city buses, which are Peter Pan and Greyhound buses, as well as Connecticut Transit buses. Connecticut Transit buses could also stop along Asylum, uh, as they currently do, um, depending on where it's appropriate for them to stop along Asylum. And this could also um, be located directly north of the station if we wanted to build a cap um, farther north of the train station. So right now it's on existing ground, but if we wanted to extend the cap farther north, we could also locate the bus facility a little bit closer to the rail facility. And a, a cap would just be a cover over the highway? Correct. What, what, can you remind us what the um, purple boxes are? north and south. And right. Return. These would be the access points along the platform. So, and keep in mind this is, uh, you're looking at the street level, a bird's eye view of the street level. Okay, so, th so the platform you would access 
under, um, it would be at the same um, level as the highway, the depressed highway. You get off the train, go onto the platform, then you would need to get up to the street level. These purple boxes represent the access points, so it would be stairs, elevator, uh, escalator at that point. Um, approximate location of where they would be located, one on the north side of the platform and one on the south side of a thousand foot platform. So you'd be going below grade to get to the actual train platform? Correct. Okay. And the train station itself would be multi-level because you would have your street level and then below grade you would have to get down to the platform level. You could also have a um, mezzanine level underneath the um, street level where you could go under Garden Street possibly to get the, to the bus facility in this example. So again, this is just one concept out of the five that we're reviewing. In terms of uh, TOD and economic development, do you want to add? Um, yeah, so, so you know, as we look at these alternatives, some of the variables you're going to see are, is, is one, or are, are the bus station and the train station really feel like one? Are they really more separate from one another? Another variable is going to be whether the, um, the stations are built over the highway or whether they're built on, on solid ground uh, beside the highway. It's going to be very difficult to get private sector development built over the highway just because of cost premiums. Um, so um, if we've got the station and the bus facility over the highway, um, that probably frees up more land uh, for private sector development, but it does add cost to the station. So there's a trade-off there. Adds more cost to the station, but leaves more land for private development. So what you sort of see here is the um, station in a very prominent location on, on asylum and I think we could uh, you know have a lot of further discussion about if there's a plaza or a park space in front of the station what's the right dimension for that probably here it's shown about a hundred feet that might be in my mind a little bit too far back but the idea is a strong one as I think Bill talked about earlier the, the way the public space is incorporated around the station is one of the things that makes station buildings prominent uh, public uh, buildings here we've got the, the bus station uh, not um, over the highway, so um, that is um, means it's occupying you know land that otherwise could be used for housing or mixed use development or you know workspace, um, but it probably also makes that facility less less expensive. So there's a there's a trade off um, in there as well. I think it also interestingly in terms of how it's set up between asylum and garden, we've got uh, really strongest pedestrian entrance on on asylum. So you know, that's really the front door of the station. Um, and then on Garden Street, we have the uh, opportunity for access by vehicles, you know, kiss and ride, other things. I think we found in some other you know, urban stations, the ability to separate pedestrian access, vehicular access can be quite, uh, you know, can be quite important. So it, it's quite successful in that, in that respect. And um, I also I did not mention that structured parking is also incorporated into these concepts, typically above the bus layout facility. Uh, we're estimating 500 to 600 um, structured parking spaces that would be required um, at the station. In addition, just to amplify what David's talking about, this scheme gives opportunity to have development on both sides of the station uh, fronting on asylum. So it creates that continuous opportunity all along the asylum front to have activation along that northern stretch and have potentially even lobby entrances that access directly into that station, like Grand Central in New York, potentially, um, to have that compact development right around the station. I think question over here. I think we had a question. I had a question about the um, Kiss and Ride, so the uh -huh. only access to it is on Garden Street? Uh, we're a off of Spruce, yes. Garden Street would be your access point and for how the Kiss big, and Ride. Is that a parking lot or a... No, it's a 30 spot, uh, 30 spaces is what we're estimating for the uh, Kiss and Ride to so drop off. for a parking lot, like... Okay. Right, like a, a surface, uh, yeah, pull off. But yet the bus, the bus ramp, the bus lanes on Asylum could basically also be used for buses for drop off. Actually, um, <laughs> like we're, they are on we're, Street. You know, we understand that the traffic patterns would be such that we probably wouldn't want the drop off along Asylum. We would really want to pull that into the site. So uh, we're really anticipating just the local transit buses stopping along Asylum. We're also suggesting in this con concept that the bus 
uh, traffic comes in and off of Spruce Street into the bus um, lot. It just seems like the Kiss and Ride is a little out of the way for cars. They have to go kind of around and stuff. Well, and you'd come up to Spruce through Garden or off of Cogswell um, onto Garden. Yes. But like coming down Asylum Avenue, you'd have to take a left-hand turn, and it would probably be easier. I'm just saying mm -hmm. I see the cars pick Kiss and Ride all the time, and mm -hmm. they take the bus lane on Spruce Street now all the time, like full. Mm -hmm. Um, well, that's why we'd like to keep them separate, right? But um, I'm just saying it's going to be easier right. to just drop it off on Asylum mm -hmm. Avenue and not try to take a left-hand turn, and it's just mm -hmm. something to consider because the sure. only way to get there is a left-hand turn lane, Okay. I think. All right, thank you. What else? Any other comments on this concept in particular? I just had a quick question. Sure. David had said that um, <clears throat> building the bus terminal over on the cap would be more expensive than on the ground. Is there any particular reason for that? Well, you would have to extend the cap, and the cap would be a, you know, um, adds cost to the project. Okay. So, you know, You're basically for building a bridge to build yeah. the building on top of. Right. Yep. Just something to consider, not, not necessarily to prohibit this design, but something to consider. Okay, we'll move on one, to this. One more. Oh. One more, one more, one more. Okay, go back. Um, I just, I have to leave, but I just have a little bit of a concern mm -hmm. when it comes to um, disabled access, having mm -hmm. a train and a bus station separate. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just make that comment overall, but okay. will this, will it be on the website where Thank to you. send this back? Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a form at the uh, end of the website, comment. I'm sorry, uh, there's a comment and, and yeah. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, the second uh, concept on the north side is called the Garden Street Access. Um, it's a combined rail and bus facility, so similar to what um, this woman has just said about uh, the need for a multimodal station to allow the connectivity to be easier and, and um, more efficient. So we're recommending that the station be both a rail and bus facility, and then the bus uh, layout be behind just to the north. Uh, built over a cap, it could also go possibly in a north-south direction too, depending on the space requirements. Again, this is a drop-off area off of Garden, and your access uh, with the buses would be off of Garden Street. This, uh, you know, again, is the overbuilt over the cap. So this, so this one conceptually is trying to get the, the buses and the trains as part of one facility mm -hmm. in this block right here. Um, again, that north-south shift of the orientation might help up free up a uh, more development site adjacent to the train station here, if we could make a move like that, if we could get them integrated appropriately. But it's very similar to the previous scheme we looked at, other than the, the combination of the bus and the train station together. Yeah, I mean, very similar in that way, but uh, you know, what we get here is we're able to free up another parcel of land there um, that, that could also accommodate development. Not as quite as prominent as the two sites that Bill talked about on Asylum and either side of the train station, but one that could be valuable nonetheless. Any questions on this or comments on this concept? You lose the plaza, though, that concept. In this concept, we're not showing a plaza. That no. doesn't mean that you don't, you, you could uh, possibly incorporate a plaza depending on the space requirements in front. I mean, these, this is all di di diagramic. Yeah, uh, di what did you the, call it before, diagramic? I the guess. intent was <laughs> wherever the train station right. is, at least on Asylum, because Asylum is a, such an important connector to downtown. Then on that side of the street, we try to get a 35-foot or so sidewalk with, you know, two rows of trees and lots of streetscape amenities. So there's always an idea of setting the station back a little bit and getting lots of amenity to help increase the ability for folks to comfortably walk up this hill and have an environment mm -hmm. they, they want to be a part of on this side with lots of amenity. You also have the bus, it, it, buses going in and out of the bus station and then the kiss and ride going in and out of there. Does that sort of predict gridlock in that area for busy times? Well, I think the Garden Street access point, uh, well, it doesn't, definitely would, you know, be an alternate than using Asylum the entire uh, distance, but I don't know if Nick wants to add to that or... So Garden Street mainly serves, in this case, as an access point. Um, and if you're coming up or down Asylum Hill, it is a nice little east-west route, but it doesn't go anywhere beyond Spruce Street. So the traffic volumes there wouldn't be terribly high. You could be consider it similar to the way Myrtle Street is today, going under the highway. And just just to reiterate what what Gina said earlier. I mean, these are you know very very diagrammatic. So we you know we 
I mean, I, I don't know what that is, 250 feet. I mean, it's perfectly possible with the size of our station when you got to the level of building design that we could incorporate a plaza that was deeper, you know, at one part of that site, um, you know, while having a you know, wider building at the other part. So I think all of these ideas can be incorporated ultimately. And we've simplified this for the gr uh, for graphic purposes. We really have uh, some more details in our drawings. If anybody's interested, they can come up afterwards and, and see some more of the detail in terms of how the buses are laid out and how the station building is laid out a little bit. But this is for, you know, the presentation purposes. So. onto 84 West and replacing it with the uh, Cogswell entrance, right? The folks that access that now, I'm, I'm missing how they're going to get there. Are they going to get there through Garden Street and then rolling around? Or in other words, so, so Garden Street, as you guys envision it, is going to be pretty quiet. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting how they're going to get from let's say Metro Garage, right, to 84 West. Maybe I'm missing it. I'm sorry, I have to ask, what's Metro Garage? Uh, or, or one of those garages that's around the Civic Center. Okay, so so up, kind of, where the legend is, yeah. almost, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that makes more sense, yeah. Right, so if you are, uh, so right now, that's the entrance right there where the cursor's at, and so if you're right there, Because yeah. yeah. otherwise, that would be some left-hand turns. It is left-hand turns. Oh. And the other way would be the right-hand turns. Well, you could go either way if you want. That's the, sh the shorter would be taken. To yeah, it would be like that. So I'm just putting that in terms of activity on Garden Street. Mm -hmm. uh, see, that's a, that just means it sounds like there would be a lot more uh, traffic there. Just because of the access yeah. there in the right hand turns. It looks like about four or five hundred cars an hour. That might be a little tricky to put into perspective, but think about it, it's like a car every eight seconds or so. <clears throat> Did you have a follow up question? Well, just some conceptual. I'm just thinking about your access to the train and the concept of multimodal and being able to you know, come from New Haven into Hartford to go to work mm -hmm. and put your bike on the train, then get off the train mm -hmm. with a bike mm -hmm. and be able to maneuver not on stairs and not necessarily in elevators, but on ramps. Mm -hmm. And then the bicycle infrastructure right next to the train station that allows you to safely get to where you need to go in all directions. And then the other concept of, if you're coming into Hartford or you're living and you need to get somewhere by bike to, or to take a bike to the train station and then you're gonna hop on the train to another city to work and you wanna park your bike somewhere. So parking infrastructure that's sorely lacking in Hartford now would be really great to have bike park infrastructure that's covered and you know keeps bikes safe. Mm -hmm. So that's just two couple of concepts. Bikes, but that is definitely part of the plan, and and, um, uh, and that opinion has been expressed um, a lot during the project. That that is definitely uh, something that will be incorporated. Yes. So thank you. All right. Gina, can I just add one further thought, sure. which I think we didn't mention, which, which is this is the question of the station, bus, and train over the highway, a, a rail, you know, right away that we don't know at this point for sure that we'll actually be able to, to do that right. from a security perspective as opposed to a construction perspective. So that's, a, that's an ongoing uh, you know, conversation and we don't have a definitive you know, answer to whether that will be feasible um, or not, which you know, gets which us to Which is why we get to this concept. So this is uh, a station, or a rail station, again in the purple, just north of Asylum and east of Cogswell that would be built off the tracks and then a bus facility uh, east of where the um, highway will be going, so on solid ground. So this allows for construction immediately of either facility. Uh, I think the drawback is that it does split the bus and the 
and the rail facility so it wouldn't be a multimodal station but then I think the question needs to be um, continue to be asked how many transfers between bus and rail um, you know people feel would occur so I think that could be a good discussion point also any ideas on on your feelings on a split facility oh yeah we have one just the concept of you know trying to get people out of cars and thinking that in the optimal world people be coming by bus to the train station and leaving the train station by bus or some other mode instead of the private car is in my mind the most optimal goal to try to reduce traffic and gridlock and smog and everything else. Obviously, we put a lot of pressure on Garden Street and the connection because of that um, and how you get people from, if they're coming from cars or coming from the bus station up to the, the, the transit center, the train station, how do you make that connection? The other part of this that has to be contended with is that you'll have a 200-foot gap on the north side over the highway that has to be contended with, probably is open space, and then a 300-foot gap to the south with the train platform and the highway combined, which is almost as long as a football field. So that mitigation of that condition is really important, and that's why you know getting an experience coming up asylum that's designed maybe with terraces, but certainly with lots of amenities to be able to get people to make that walk all along an active frontage before you get to the highway, ideally. But these gaps just have to be mitigated in terms of the experience along the highway overbuilt area. Another kiss and ride, so you would then have to go like a little road to get to the kiss and right, right now, this is, shows like a um, right a little road from Garden Street down to a drop off place at this location. I mean, what is not shown here, and I think Casey was just indicating it, there are a couple buses, bus routes that do use Asylum Street that would continue to use Asylum Street. So you could have some of the bus connections, but the buses that terminate at uh, Union Station right now would go into this bus facility, and, the, and as would the inner city buses, the Peter Pan and Greyhound buses. So um, not, a, you know, not totally separate from each other, but basically separate. And there, okay, so, oh, so there, you've taken away the bus lanes on, on this asylum. You know, I don't know that the purposely bus. we did. I, you know, we could still have bus. buses stop okay. along asylum, yeah. Okay, any other, any comments on this concept? Any additional comments? We'll move to the south side. So this concept was actually designed by members of the public. Um, and they provided it to us after our last uh, public PAC meeting, workshop meeting. Um, this allows for a uh, station facility built on the south part of Asylum on top of a cap. Again, these are the railroad tracks with the, your access point up to street level. Um, it's probably a second one should be placed somewhere. The station. And then because of the um, view between uh, the Capitol and the Hartford Insurance Company um, tower, not tower, that's not the correct term, dome, thank you, um, that the idea is that this would be a really pleasant uh, view of the iconic st uh, station building and of Bushnell Park. So the bus um, layout would be in a horizontal direction this could be drop-off, this would be a transit way connection to Broad Street. Um, do we have any comments on the... Sure. So one of the strengths of this scheme, I think, is the open space connection of U-Corridor connection from the Dome of the Hartford down to the Dome of the Capitol and that connection through there. I think one of the challenges are um, the nature of that um, connection and the experience on the street and the view through it, having um, bus facilities flanking on either side of it, not not a very walkable mixed use street um, in terms of activity. So we wanna to try to revisit that, I would think, in terms of if, if the conceptual power of that move is important, do we think that it wants to be more than just a service drive for the transit facility, or could it be more? Um, and then the opportunity for development to set up along it, flanking it, what are those connections and how is that integrated into a, a development um, that, that, that really strengthens the whole street network on the edges? Um, but one of the Great things about this one too is using the southern station to again fill that gap over the highway along this portion um, to really connect the, the Farmington and uh, Asylum Avenue corridor. This also has connection to the CT Fast Track, one of the alternates that being considered in a tunnel option. So a new road 
uh, road B, and then the CT fast track would continue up on road A. This would be the station before it continues into the downtown area. The other station concepts on the north side would also accom accommodate CT fast track, but along Asylum Street like the, um, the route currently goes. So this does provide a more direct connection to um, one of the alternates that's being considered for fast track for the dedicated um, way. Uh, quick else? question, Gina. Does this concept work better with the Farmington Avenue network extension? Well, I, do you want to address that? We did yeah, discuss I, that. I, I think that, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the things that's true of all of these concepts that have the station south of Asylum is they need to be connected to many of the variables we talked about earlier. Does Farmington continue through, um, you know, I think, so we have one scheme that shows Farmington continues through like this. We have other options that show a connection from Broad through to Bushnell Park um, West, uh, which would mean that, you know, this alternative would need to be adapted and it's not you know, perfectly possible it could be adapted uh, to accommodate that. I think the alternatives north of Asylum are relatively predictable because I think we're sort of fairly fixed on what the network looks like there. Uh, but because there still continues to be some, um, you know, a l fairly significant number of variables south of Asylum, that's something that we need to think about in terms of each of these alternatives. The, the other one th point I would make about this one, which we could make about other alternatives as well, is just the quality of Broad Street. Um, you know, I think we've put a lot of um, effort into creating asylum as a great street. Broad Street is clearly a terrible pedestrian street today because of the ramps and the whole infrastructure there. And I think it's going to continue to require, you know, attention as we go forward in terms of what that experience is for a pedestrian, you know, coming through, you know, here. And as we think about bus infrastructure and access and all those other things, uh, we need to just think about that as well. Just to add, um, you know, one thing we've been wrestling with for the last couple of months is, is, again, is that the right alignment for the street to come through if it's an open space? Where should the ramps sit? I, I've been concerned about the location of these ramps because I think it, it really does um, deter pedestrians coming down this road, south crossing, you know, what could be three, four, five lanes of traffic coming out of ramps at this location, trying to get the local street up and trying to get the ramps as far down as we can push it so that the park frontage has good addresses and a good pedestrian environment associated with it. But it's something we're still studying whether we could inverse that or not, or, what, or whether the right thing to do and can be made to happen is push the ramps down as Tom was presenting earlier. So that's still something we're, we're very much evaluating still. So in other words, these southern station options add just another level of complexity to what to do with this block. Right, and it's an iterative process as we're working on the roadway connections, we're working on what the station layout could be on the south. Okay, so our second south um, concept. Broad Street Station, uh, access is in and off of Broad Street. Um, the rail, uh, again, is the purple icon. The bus is laid out more in a north-south um, direction, just south of the rail, so that you would have a multimodal bus and rail facility with um, bus access at this point. And again, everything off of Broad Street. This would be built over the lowered highway once the lowered highway is constructed. And this gets to David's point about the, the challenges of, of Broad Street, and is it right to have a, a big you know, parking facility and bus station fronting on that edge towards Frogs Hollow, or does that want to sit somewhere else? I mean, the challenge is, you know, it's partially an overbuild today. Where are the places that it couldn't be an overbuild if there were other options that needed to be studied? And it just pushes it further into the development, which we're trying to keep focused really along the frontage of Asylum and Road A, and looking at the right places for private development, but trying to keep that those transit components together, the bus and the train, as close together as possible in this strategy, um, and still allowing for um, flexibility in what development could occur on the rest of the block to the south. I, I think the other one to say about this this alternative is, is probably the bus facility is probably the furthest of all the options we've looked at from the center of gravity of, of, of downtown. So if you think about you know, Union Station, if you think about people, many people coming from this direction, you know, that's a, probably a five, seven minute additional uh, walk to there. So if these, these options, um, you know, assuming you're coming from north of the park, this one is probably um, the most remote. Okay. Any other comments or questions on this concept? 
All right, well, we just want to have a general discussion if you have other input that you would like. Um, is there a station concept you prefer? And if so, why or why not, or don't prefer? And do you think the station should be on the north side of asylum or the south side of asylum? Do you have any suggestions or input on that? Uh, any access concerns? Any other additional questions? Jennifer likes to make me walk. I do. I, I just can't help but notice that um, is Broad Street closed a given? Every single one of your examples has Broad Street. We had to just pick a roadway um, network concept or whatever. That's the one we started with. So that should not, uh, what's the word? Assume. We it's just the assume. more you see things right. in print, the more they become real. I've learned that before. But no, don't, don't, you shouldn't assume that. I don't need a mic. Do you have any information about uh, the people traveling to the bus station, where they come from and how they get there? Are they walking or you know, driving? We, or? Uh, we do have some information on that. I don't have it right off um, the top of my head, but, but we do have. Guiding the location, mm -hmm. I would think. Not to that degree, no. Mm -mm. Not enough to really say, okay, it should be north or south or, um, no, not really. Not to that degree. There's not that kind of data out there. Anybody else? I'm gonna stay back here. Well, it depends on how big the footprint, um, you know, we're assuming 500, 600 um, spaces. That could be five floors. That could be three floors. It just all depends on how it's laid out and how, how it's going to accommodate and how large the footprint is. And, um, you know, does it get shared with other TOD uses in the area? So that, again, is not really defined at this point. Um, the kiss and ride spaces don't seem to be the same in all the, uh, the exhibit, e examples. Are, are they, in fact, the same size? Uh, you know, I'm really not, I don't, I'm not a big car driver, but I am go on Spruce Street all the time, and I see the number of cars of people that are picking up and dropping off, and it, it cripples the street when the times the bus comes in. So I'm just trying to figure out, I guess, Partly, I, I know I'm supposed to be encouraged to use Garden Street, but with Kiss and Ride on Garden Street, I'm not too excited about that. But uh, the other ones look a little smaller, so I guess I have You know, we did a, again, this is only di diagramic. I cannot say that word. Progr whatever. Programmatic diagram, whatever. It, it don't, don't, um, don't, you know, don't assume that just because they're different shapes or different sizes, you know. But saying that, we did do a field investigation. We did counts on the number of, um, drop-offs and pickups during certain time frames. We've done research on that, and we've produced um, a white paper, shall we say, that does justify about 30 to 35 um, uh, kiss and ride spots. So that's the number, yeah, we're going to go with. Yeah, right, right. Well, and it, and it depends on what time of day it is and, and how long they're sitting. And so that is that is the assumption we're making as we move forward. So um, again, there's more details in the drawings here than on the graphic representation of, of them. So you're welcome to come up and look at those. Any comments from this side of the room? You guys? Tony. Okay, so I think we just have our closing questions. Next steps, Mike? Yeah, well, the next step is to, uh, we, you know, we took a lot and taken a lot of notes. I see Ben over there taking copious notes. So we're going to take his feedback, again, um, work this back into our thinking um, as a team of kind of what works really well, what the, what the community is looking for. And we're meeting with our, uh, our PAC next month, so we'll develop these ideas a little bit more. We'll add, add a little detail to them. Um, but we're going to continue to evaluate. Uh, obviously, there's still a lot of traffic work. Um, there's, there's really looking at the whole bicycle pedestrian network, where the parking belongs, what the size and shape of everything is. So there's still a lot of details that need to be worked out, and we're going to continue to do that. So refinement, refinement, refinement. We'll continue to share our ideas as we, uh, as we learn more. But uh, your input was really instrumental to the whole process tonight. So uh, thank you very much for coming out. We're here for a few more minutes. If you want to informally talk to any of us, we're, 
we're, we're available. Thank you very much. My name is Jay Stan McCauley, and uh, I do business as Light Source Productions. I provide professional services in the area of strategic video communications. Uh, first, what we do is we help you craft your message uh, using what I call the rule of the five W's, who, what, when, where, and why. We do event documentation, uh, content acquisition, full-scale productions, um, editing, and, of course, distribution uh, through our social media television network. And with social media, uh, video is more important now than it has ever been. Uh, whether you're talking big business, small business, nonprofit, church, or just an individual. Uh, let's say you, you know you you plan uh, uh, you're planning an event, a wedding, whatever the case may be. But but let's say a big event, uh, but no video. And you spend all this time, all these hours, uh, to put this event on, and maybe a hundred, two hundred people attend the event. But more important than that is that thousands could attend by watching it on social media. But of course you don't think about this until after the event is over. You can't afford not to capture it for social media. And despite what people think, I am affordable. Give me a call. Let's plan your next video project and share it with the world on my social media television network. I promise you that you will have the attention of one person, me.